So real quick, th so that what made you get into selling gym equipment? Did you have the gym first, and then you start selling, or vice versa? So, when did you get into the gym, a gym business? How many years ago? The actual the industry itself. I think yeah. I started when I was twenty one, working for Twenty Four Hour Fitness. <laughs> okay. So same kind of situation. Um, early, uh, late nineties, really. Um, my cousin married a man who owned a gym. I started working at the gym. So I've been doing this over 20 years. And sure. when I opened my gym at the end of 06, Anthony, it was all through credit card. The bank laughed at me, robbing Peter literally to pay Paul. I was a little training studio, nothing like I am today. And I realized there was no equipment places like what I'm doing now. You basically had to go and get new and treadmills back then were five, six, seven thousand dollars new. I knew I couldn't put Dick Sporting Goods equipment in my gym. So the issue was I didn't have the money to buy new equipment. So 08 hit, if you remember all the mom and pop gyms start closing. And I was going around buying four or five pieces of equipment just for my own gym, not for to sell them. And they, I would sell one or two here and there, and it would always sell pretty fast. And a lot of my, I just kind of make, started making a name for myself. A lot of locals were like, hey, Stephen, can you find me a recumbent bike or a treadmill? They wanted what they walked on my gym, like a life fitness treadmill, but they didn't want to spend several thousand dollars. So sure. I started doing that. And the girl that I was dating at the time, after a couple of years, she was like, you really love this. Why don't you do it? Well, Anthony, as you know, almost like you guys developing software, how, what's the next game plan? How do you start something like this? I had no warehouse, no forklift, no box trucks, no nothing. I didn't even know where to get the stuff from. So what I ended up doing um, was literally buying mom and pop gyms out and using my, uh, my gym as a showroom almost to where I'd always have 50 or so pieces on the floor and I would sell them and buy more and this and that. And as you know, because when I signed up with you guys, I was, I was doing this pretty decent, not to the level I am now, but um, as you meet people and especially with social media, things uh, just continue to get bigger. So when I created, I'll never forget this, a social media account, uh, for Facebook years back, this is probably, I would say, seven to eight years ago, I started posting one piece of gym equipment a day, and it was my wow. Facebook still to this day, super fitness, new and used gym equipment, and Anthony, nobody called, nobody. <laughs> Oh, so man. Was, I was like, so back then Craigslist was a big deal. So I was advertising within a four hour radius of Craigslist. Craigslist, as we know, is nothing like it used to be, but right. it was the thing back then. So what ended up happening was I was, uh, I'll never forget this as long as I live. A guy from Pennsylvania calls. I bet you this is five to six months in posting every day. And he says, Hey, Steven, I saw this piece you posted. Did you, uh, do you have it? And I was like, yes, sir, I do. He says, how much is it? And I can't remember the price, but let's say a thousand bucks. I said, he said, okay, I'll take it. I just need you to ship it to me. Well, at the time, everybody was coming to me. They were, you know, I was de hand delivering equipment. I had no clue, Anthony, how to freight equipment across the country. And oh as God. you know, this stuff's thousand pounds. It's sure. not easy. So, but this is what happened. And this is the point of the story. Light bulb went off in my head. And I said, if I can sell one piece of uh, Pennsylvania, I can sell this shit around the world. And I knew a lot of the bodybuilders. I'd been going to the Mr. Olympia since 2007. I had competed on a pretty high level in bodybuilding. And I was very passionate about the fitness world, bodybuilding. And I just try to help people the same that you were talking. I try to give honest advice. If you don't need to open a gym, I don't want to take your money if you're planning on failure because I'm not that type of person. I'd rather see you keep because... 
as you know, very the mom and pop gyms, as I refer to them, not all of them make it. It's a no. very, very high risk business. And so I always tell people and give them my honest opinion that this is not for everybody. And if you don't love it, if you don't breathe, sleep it, everything, do not get in it. Amen. 